St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Lord, you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it was said to those in, in ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to counsel. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering a gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on your way to church with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid every last penny. You have heard that it is, was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let them give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said of those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows who have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of a great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no, Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <coughs> Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Gospel lesson this morning covers a great deal of information about relationships and how we are to live out our call to love our neighbor. Now, if we were to try to cover all of this information, I could probably have you out of here by Friday. <laughs> Today, we're going to look at one aspect of our lesson and our call to love God and neighbor. I think it's one that can be more challenging for us from time to time. Let me begin by asking you, have you ever been offended by something somebody said or did to you? Have you ever said or done something that offended someone else? I hear, oh yes, behind me here. <laughs> the reality is that most likely both have happened to us. And unfortunately, those will happen to us more times throughout our journey in life. But you know, it seems that we live in a time and culture right now where people are easily offended. Some people suggest that people look for reasons to be offended. Sometimes it becomes difficult for us to know what to say to someone else for fear of retribution and being blasted by that person's response. More than likely, we're all guilty of offending others from one time to another. We may not have meant to. Maybe we weren't even aware of it at that time. But yet we have, resulting in hard feelings and hurt feelings, often strained or broken relationships. Our Gospel lesson this morning from, from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount covers a lot of information Two of my compliments are here this morning. What are some of those things that you heard that we've been talking about a lot? The Ten Commandments, right. In our lesson that we're, we see today, Jesus gives us a lot of instructions on how to 
deal with those times when we, whether we intend to or not, have hurt someone else. And as Christians, we're called to set it right. This also includes, includes our need, our need to forgive those who hurt us. Christ's message from his Sermon on the Mount is a commentary of sorts of how we live out those Ten Commandments, how we love God and neighbor. Jesus begins, you have heard it said, verse 21, in this context, refers to murder. His listeners are thinking about this physical act of taking another life. And in fact, some are probably thinking, that doesn't apply to me. I've never taken anyone else's life. As the audience listens further, Jesus adds a twist. But, I say to you, there's one of those big buts that Jesus gives us so often. But, there's more way, ways than one to murder someone. Sure, it's true that the physical act of taking a life is murder, but careless and hurtful words or actions or rumors or innuendos can murder someone's spirit, can murder their reputation, can possibly kill a relationship. This is what Jesus is referring to, those times by thought, word, or deed that we've intentionally or unintentionally hurt someone else. The sad thing is, there are many Christians today who think they're doing that as part of God's work. God's commandment to us is to love one another, never to hurt one another. Jesus goes through an explanation about careless words. He specifically uses the term raka, which means empty-headed, or in today's language, fool. Jesus is saying that if our anger ever reaches the point where we use such language, we're in danger of judgment. The word fool in that context refers to a person who is godless. Proverbs 14.1 says, The fool in his heart says, There is no God. In the days that Jesus walked this earth and ministered, to call another person a fool was a serious accusation. No one would consider doing such a thing or saying such a thing unless their anger had reached that point of pure hatred. This ultimately... This is ultimately where unforgiveness leads to hatred. In today's world, it could be comparable to telling someone to go to hell and truly mean it. Jesus is revealing where unresolved anger and unforgiveness can lead to hatred. And hatred leads to judgment. Jesus then adds another wrinkle in his teaching by saying, if you come to the altar to leave an offering and you remember that you offended someone, you go and make it right. And then bring your offering to the Lord. In other words, as Christians, that should be a top priority to be reconciled with those God puts in our lives. Why? Because in this way, God uses God's people to be ministers of grace and love. As God's children, we are to be quick and faithful to attempt to make things right. In doing so, we not only reconcile the relationship, we also give witness that can lead to healing and restoration for others. Now, there are limitless scenarios that we can think about of how we offend people, but I think they fall into two main categories. Maybe the person we offended believes that we are unjust in our treatment of him or her, when the reality is we did no harm. That person may have inaccurate information that led to inaccurate conclusions. Maybe that person looks at the situation and thinks, well, there must be something wrong because I don't understand this, or I don't understand that. Maybe the situation has been told from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, and so grossly distorted by the time it gets back to that person. I'll give you a really good example. In my first call, I had lots of problems with my leg, and I had multiple surgeries and almost actually lost my leg. But the area, folks in the area churches were praying for me very hard, and it worked so well. But I also led the food pantry. We hosted and I led it in our community. One Friday morning, the one woman from Grace Brother Church came in, and I'm standing there, and she starts weeping and screaming. And I'm calming her down, what's wrong? She said, we heard you have died this week. Because the story got told, and the prayer concern got told, and got told, and got told, and got distorted, and got distorted, and got distorted, and by Friday I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, it doesn't always happen that way, but we 
we know have stories. Remember a telephone as kids, you tell somebody the next person the next person. And it gets distorted and information gets wrong. But that doesn't make that person hurt any less, even when we're not hurt. The other situation is that we did do something or say something against a person. And for that reason, we have wronged them. And we are guilty. Let me ask you this morning, how does that apply to your situation? Are there people that you have hurt or offended? Maybe you didn't realize it at the time. Maybe you didn't think about it, what your actions, your words did for somebody that you love, or somebody that so dearly loves you. Maybe you didn't care. For whatever reason, those persons were clearly wrong. It is to those persons that Jesus tells us and sends us to be reconciled with, leaving your gift at the offer and go. You might have a question then. What if they're not open to reconciliation? What if they're not ready to forgive me? Then what? Paul reminds us in Romans 12, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live in peace with others. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live in peace with others. Those persons may not be open to our overtures. But does that mean we shouldn't attempt to make amends? How many of you know in the 12-step program what step number nine is? We've often read about it or heard about it or maybe shared in meetings. It's the same thing. As much as it depends on you, you are to do everything you can to be reconciled with that person that you've hurt or wronged. Everything you can, as long as we are loyal to God's truth. Matthew 5, 9, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called what? The children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Notice Jesus didn't say, Blessed are the peacekeepers, because peacekeepers often avoid confrontation at any cost to keep peace. People sometimes will say or do anything to avoid confrontation. But that isn't what God tells us to do. Sometimes we need to confront somebody in love and grace and mercy in the truth of God's love. Blessed are the peacemakers. A peacemaker goes in love and confronts, praying truth so that reconciliation can endure. God is that way with each of us. God is not willing that we should perish. But God will not compromise his truth and love for a relationship. God seeks reconciliation, but never at the expense of truth. Too often, we live in that place called regret. If I'd only done that, if I would have never said that, if that wouldn't have happened. Paul is saying, in essence, be faithful to the word of God. Do what you can and leave the rest of God. Being obedient opens the avenue of grace in the lives of those we see. How do, we approach, how do we approach those that we've offended? In humility. In humility. There may be times that we don't totally agree with somebody. And we don't have to. All we need to do is trust that we can agree to disagree. And that's more than okay. Because I can love you as a fellow child of God. Without agreeing with you. Without thinking I have all the answers or you do. I can love you. Because I'm commanded to. And I can love you because God loves me with all my faults and all my brokenness. So I ask you to think about this week and to pray about this week. Who are those that you need to be reconciled with? Who are those that you need to reach out to to make amends? Even if they're not open to forgiving you, we are called. Christ's children to reach out to them and to put it in God's hands. Remember Paul's words, as much as it depends on you, live in peace with others. So as you think about that, and as you pray about it this week, I ask you to consider this. <coughs> what lengths did God go to to be reconciled with you? <coughs> he sent Jesus. His only begotten 
have a son who lovingly and willingly died so that we can be forgiven and so that we can be reconciled with God. Because God didn't consider anything too high a price for us to know and to share his love. I invite you to think about that and pray about that as you consider reconciling with those that we need to. We are called and we are empowered.